so we can just this back. Um, so, hello and welcome to Ransom Review. So this week we're going to be talking about one of our favourite directors, Paul Greengrass. So Paul Greengrass is a man who's directed a fair few films, six films we're going to be reviewing today. Uh, let's get straight onto it. So, yeah. film number one we're going to be talking about was the 2010 film Green Zone. So this is starring Matt Damon and uh, Jason Isaacs, Greg Kinnear. Uh, it's an action thriller, uh, which is kind of what Paul Greengrass specialises in. Matt Damon, he's just coming off the back of Born Supremacy, Born Ultimatum, and then again working with Paul Greengrass. So there are some similarities in, obviously, acting style, directing style, of course, a fair bit in plot. But overall, fairly enjoyable. Matt Damon is an army officer and he goes rogue, basically has to hunt for weapons of mass destruction. For me, it's, for me, it's still very good, and compared to most kind of thrillers, it's still it's right up there. But in Paul Greengrass standards, because the standard is so high, it's not quite at the same standard for me. And the direction is so excellent, the way the handheld camera works is, is brilliant. It's definitely worth a watch, but it's probably one of his weaker offerings. As other action thrillers go, it's up there. He has his own kind of unique style. Yeah. He, he he upholds fairly well. Yeah, but we'll, we'll move on to one of our favourite films. Definitely. This is the 2013 Captain, Captain Phillips. Phillips. Oh. So this film, there's so many good things you can say about this film. It's just astonishing. So, the true story of Captain Phillips um, and the 2009 hijacking by Somali pirates on the on the MV Mask Alabama. Uh, the cast is uh, Tom Hanks. Barker Abdi was the 2013 BAFTA winning Best Supporting Actor. He's deservedly so. Yeah. Rightly so. Really he was, good. He's astonished. Oh, this is his first acting role, I think. It he was. really makes it his own. If I had my way, maybe Michael Fassbender should have got it for 12 Years a Slave, but that's another video. He was still exceptional this in this This guy film. deserves it, yeah. The brilliant. whole package comes together so well. Everyone acts in this so believably. The, the level of tension Greengrass oh, creates in his movies, it's especially gripping. this movie. It's gripping. The whole film, you're on edge. I haven't met one person who doesn't absolutely adore this film. Once. You come away from this film moved in a lot of ways. Like Tom Hanks at his absolute oh, finest. His finest. We, we know how good he is anyway, but this is, he's on another level. Yeah. I think we've yeah. really upped his game. This really is an incredible, incredible acting performance in a very solid film. He hasn't got many films, but this is definitely one of his finest, finest moments, yeah. um, Paul Greengrass. There's so many brilliant scenes of just tension. The direction is, the way he makes you feel like you're in his movies and the way he creates that tension as you, you feel there. He immerses the audience in his films. You are there, you're watching these events unfurl, building on those themes of tension, witnessing key events in history. 2006, it's fairly unknown, which is quite surprising considering its subject matter. This is United 93. This is based on a true story of the fourth plane of the September 11th, 2001 uh, terrorist attacks on the World Trade Center. This is the story of the fourth plane that didn't make it to its destination. This is written and directed by Paul Greengrass. I think it's one of the most underrated films I've I've ever seen. You can't actually fault this film. There's no, nothing in this it's film. It's one of those films that's up there with films like 12 Angry Men. It's flawless. Absolutely flawless. I've never felt so moved at the end of a film. I, I thought Captain Phillips was moving. Obviously, this is a very serious subject matter. Yeah. I mean, everyone knows the ending, but it's still so harrowing. The final shot of the film, I, I left the room in silence. You, you don't watch this film and come away and think, I really enjoyed that film. In no way. You wouldn't want to come out of it and say, oh, I can't wait to see that again. Yeah, loved it. You won't enjoy this film. You will love it, in a way, if you appreciate amazing filmmaking. The way he handles the subject matter, the way he handles the tension, the... Well, they're not characters, these are real people. And they basically put the story together through recorded telephone calls. You know, these passengers on this plane were calling their loved ones to say goodbye to them. The fact that it's all true makes it all the more harrowing. But Paul Greengrass is one of the few directors who could take on a subject matter this big and put it off the way he does. I mean, it's it's a brave move because it's such an important film. It's just an amazing direction. It just leaves you absolutely speechless. It's a stunning example of just brilliant filmmaking, and you summed it up perfectly. It's an important film. Yeah. It's one of the most important films ever made. Definitely. And um, you have to see it. Moving on to, again, another very, very serious film. Also another one. It's based in our history. It's based on a true story. Bloody Sunday, uh, 2002. Um, starring James Nesbitt in the, uh, the lead role. It's basically a dramatisation of the Irish civil rights protest march in 72. One of his earlier contributions, and even right from the start, from, from those kind of earlier days, you see his style emerging. Greengrass is known for his realistic directing style. You move along with the action with the character, and it's done in such a naturalistic way he has the sort of handheld camera kind of style. He really upholds it in this film. It's done with all natural lighting, all done sort of on location. Again, you won't necessarily enjoy it, but you will appreciate it for what it is, for what it's doing. It's another very important film. Again, it's an important film. And that's what he does best. He does, he takes these real situations, Captain Phillip, United 93, and this film, all based on true story. I wouldn't give this kind of subject matter to any other director after seeing these three films, but this one, I think, 
especially as is one of his earlier works, he's already showing those signs of what he can do yeah, with the subject matter. Yeah, you can almost trust him to make this film yeah. with respect and respect the film and respect the premise. You see a typical action thriller these days and someone gets killed in the film. It's ingrained in us, we don't care anymore because we know they're not real people. This film stars actors playing real people. When people die in this film, and they do die, you feel every single one. Yeah. And I think that's testament to how brilliant a film it is. Now to the 2004 The Bourne Supremacy. We're getting into more popular territory now, uh, more recent offerings. Well, well, no, but yet I still think this is the most underrated trilogy ever made. It leaves every other thriller behind because it's Paul Greengrass. The car chases and the handheld camera work in the car chases make you feel like you're there. You're so tense the whole way through the films watching it. So this is Matt Damon, Joanne Allen, and she does a brilliant job in this film. Jason Bourne, who's played by Matt Damon, is a fugitive on, on the run from the police. He's a former CIA operative, and he's also trying to figure out his past. Yeah, set after the events of the first film, The Bourne Identity, which was very popular, and it's a very enjoyable film. Obviously not directed by Paul Greengrass, and then Paul Greengrass came along, and he completely destroyed that trope of sequels being much worse than the original. This film steps it up in every single way. It's one of the tightest films I've ever seen. The whole way through the film you're fighting for, for Jason. The ending is it's one of my favourite endings. I absolutely yeah. love it. And what's clever about the ending is it's in the end of the second one, but it comes half an hour into the third film. It's so clever. It's genius. Way, that, yeah. that last scene, actually, it was going to end in the scene before. Yeah. And he didn't find out until about three weeks before the release of the film that they've been granted a third film. Yeah. And so they filmed that scene very much at the last minute and they could have thrown it away as a throwaway scene and yet the fact they tie it into the third film, he's a genius. An absolute masterpiece. Yeah, it, it really is. And of course tying straight into the third film, The Bourne Ultimatum from 2007. It sort of carries on from the second film, I won't reveal too many plot points because you just got to watch it. There's a rooftop scene in The Bourne Ultimatum which goes on for about five to ten minutes. It's the most gripping thing I've ever seen in, in an action movie. It's You're not just on edge. That's thing, there are so many action films these days, they're so cheap and they're so predictable, and they could have a similar scene in this and it just wouldn't be as good. And I think that's solely down to Paul Greengrass. I think what, what makes Paul Greengrass so good is you believe everything. Even those small moments in these films where you think, that wouldn't happen, you still believe it because of the way he's directed it. I mean, Matt Damon is absolutely fantastic. Oh, yeah. I mean, what a fantastic actor he is. Him, him and Paul Greengrass, you can tell, have such a fantastic relationship. They always work so well together. He puts everything into this role and he's absolutely brilliant. But it's just two of the best films, not just best thrillers, two of the best films I've ever seen. And yeah. the, the, the hardest thing is trying to work out which one is a better film. They're both fantastic in their own right. I can't separate the two. I think The Bourne Supremacy is such a tight film, mm -hmm. as we've already said. But The Bourne Ultimatum just has that extra level of like, drama. Both of them are inseparable. They're absolutely they, brilliant. They are very similar to The Dark Knight and The Dark Knight Rises. Both excellent films, in our opinions. A lot yeah. of people didn't like The Dark Knight Rises for some reason. I think it's so epic, the yeah. scale of it. And then you've got The Dark Knight, which again is tighter, but it is excellent. They're yeah. both excellent in their own right. I still don't know which one I prefer. And it's the same with these films. And what upsets me about films that are this good, you have to compare them to other thrillers out there. <sighs> And when, when people make films such as White House Down, which is one of the most ridiculous films I've ever seen, and it's just plain pathetic. There's blowing up and shooting and violence in The Bourne that is also in this film, but the difference in quality and realism is just beyond me. We'll be talking about some of these movies, such as Commando, Nonstop, Unknown, Taken 2 and 3. common theme in that is obviously Liam Neeson, who started his career off so well with Shinder's list. What are you doing, Liam? <laughs> what is he doing? What is he We're doing? We're going on for a bit of a tangent here. The difference in quality of the action sequences. Don't believe anything in these silly movies that are out there being made. It can be enjoyable, but it's just so silly. It's such a shallow level of entertainment, if yeah. you can call it that. And then you get these films, and you genuinely come away from these films feeling you've achieved something. Yeah. Honestly, every time I watch films on the on the poorest girl, like we've mentioned, non-stop films like this, I think I've just wasted my time. You see these, and you haven't just seen them, you've experienced them. Yeah. And that's what Paul Greengrass does with not just these two films, but with all of these films. He's always got something to say. They're always excellent, whether it's an action thriller, whether it's based on a true story, whether it's a dramatisation or something. He is brilliant. So we've picked out six of his best films. If you haven't seen all of them, make sure you have, because you have to watch all of them. We're so excited for the next Bourne, which is sees Matt Damon and Paul Greengrass reunited. reunited. I can't wait. So excited. And that concludes our talk on Paul Greengrass and our director spotlight this week. Thank you for listening. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, give us a like and subscribe and a comment. Uh, see you soon. See you later.